Man, the prices on gaming monitors lately are just crazy. Of my two main panels, one of them retails for north of $850, and the other one retails for north of $1,100. And that's not even coming close to the prices on some of the top flight performance panels that are coming out right now. Now, admittedly, both my panels have all the bells and whistles you could possibly want, minus HDR, but it's really skewed my perception of price versus performance in the panel market. So I was happy when Acer reached out to me to review an entry-level panel that's set to bring some much sought after gaming features features to an entry level price point. Let's go. You're looking for cheap PC games? Check out Kingwin.net. Click the link in the description below to help support the channel and never pay full retail again. Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad C Tech, and today we're taking a look at the XF251Q panel from Acer. I'm right off the bat, I can tell you there is a lot to like in a panel that retails for a super reasonable $150 US. What we've got here is a 24 and a half inch 1080p 8-bit TN panel with 75 megahertz refresh rate and a one millisecond response time and free sync for $150. Nothing about the outside of this panel looks entry level. The lower bezel is about 21 millimeters and it's made of like a ridged molded plastic. It's made to give the illusion of brushed aluminum, but when the light hits it just right, it looks very convincing. The Acer logo is really understated. It's presented in like a black chrome or a gunmetal, and it's made to sit flush mounted with the front of the bezel. The other bezels are right at about two millimeters, but it's really important to note here that despite these paper thin physical bezels, the display does not actually go all the way up to the edge of those bezels. Around the edge, you're gonna have about five to six millimeters of dead space between the image and the bezel itself. The stand here is all black, which I love. There's no orange or red accent colors, and that scores big points with me. There are some gloss black accents here, and the mold on the plastic is a pretty aggressive design, so I was really happy they decided to keep the color understated. It's also heavy, and it's completely articulated, so you get height adjust, you get swivel, you get an up and down tilt, and a side to side tilt, and it can go full vertical. All the adjustments feel great, and the whole thing feels built tough. Now, there are standard Visa mounts if you prefer, but this is a pretty impressive stand, especially at this price point. Connections on offer here are two HDMI, one VGA, and a headphone port, which is in a super strange location on the back of the monitor, and I can't really see myself using it anyway. The speakers are exactly what you'd expect from monitor speakers with two watts of power, passable, not exactly what I'd choose for gaming if it were me, but I did kind of like them for mindless grinding on the division when I didn't want to commit to a gaming headset. Negative, Ramos. The rear of the panel keeps the design language simple with just an Acer logo appearing in gloss black. The rest of the panel looks pretty much like all their other offerings. The only thing missing here versus some of their higher end offerings is you're not going to get any kind of like USB 3 pass through connectivity and you won't see any display port connectivity. So it's a really handsome package so far. It looks really class on the desk. And the performance? I gotta say, when I started PC gaming, my first first computer monitor was actually a Vizio 30 inch 720p TV with terrible blacks and absolutely horrendous input lag. So when I bought a monitor, I went all in, man. I got a 1440p 144Hz G-Sync panel. Had I started with a panel like this, not only would I not have upgraded the panel straight away probably, I also would have saved a mint on the GPUs that it took to push that 1440p panel properly. I probably would not have felt the immediate need to upgrade. 24 and a half inches is a great pixel density for 1080p. When you read through the forums or you watch videos and you hear people talk about pixel density and 1080p being ideal at around 24 inches, they are telling you the truth. I recently got a deal on a 34 inch ultra wide 2560 by 1080 and I gotta tell you it was awful. The pixelation was so bad on that panel that I did not even keep it long enough to do a review. Now this is a TN panel, so the colors you see on screen are going to be a little bit more muted versus an IPS panel if you're used to that, but you're also not going to have to play the lottery with IPS glow. The panel we're talking about is sitting on the desk behind me if you haven't picked up on that already. Now pro tip here, right when you get this panel, go into the menu and set the HDMI black settings to low. This really punches up the contrast and it helps to saturate those colors a little more. Viewing angles are pretty legit. Normally I feel like this is pretty irrelevant because most of us spend our time looking at our monitor head on, but due to the design and price point here, I feel like this panel makes an excellent option for a triple monitor setup. I didn't notice any color shift even at extreme angles, so it feels like a good candidate for that, provided that you're okay with the dead space around the image between the displays. Now, there is one thing that bothered me about this panel right out of the box. It shows some pretty extreme ghosting, but only in certain scenarios. 
namely watching YouTube content, certain aspects of using the desktop menus, and in certain game titles, specifically Far Cry 5. In Far Cry 5, it was very noticeable when something was flying overhead, like the contrast of the image, like the eagle or the plane against the sky. You also see it really bad with stuff like wires and cables and lines. In the case of Far Cry 5, I was able to negate probably 90% of this by using the gaming sports mode. And the downside there is that it punched up the sharpness, which degraded the overall image quality for me. So it's gonna be up to you to dial in these settings as you see fit on a per use basis. This means you may find yourself switching modes often to get optimal performance. Luckily, Acer's made this really easy with just a double tap on the leftmost monitor button to pull up this menu. So you're not gonna have to navigate all this stuff. It's not buried in the menus. You can also experiment with the overdrive setting, which actually is buried in the menus. What this does, it comes in like off, normal, or extreme. And the idea is that it drives the pixels a little faster to help reduce ghosting, but it also makes the color a little inaccurate. Sometimes it can overshoot the intended color. You'll need to play with it to find the balance that looks right for you. For me, I always leave all of my Acer panels set at normal on the overdrive mode. Tested with numerous other titles, I didn't see any ghosting or artifacting of any kind that took away from the overall gaming experience. It really brought the goods for an entry-level panel. Regrettably, I don't have any AMD video cards in-house right now, so I wasn't able to get a good feel for FreeSync performance, but honestly, I just feel like that would be icing on the cake at this point. As I said, Acer did send this out on loan for the purposes of this review, but I have zero hesitation in recommending this for an entry-level panel. If I was in the position of needing one myself, I would absolutely spend my money on this. I will leave an affiliate link in the description below. If you live in the States, this is available right now on the shelf at your local Best Buy if you'd like to see it in person before you pull the trigger. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up. With a 75 megahertz, Millihertz? Megahertz. <laughs> Come on, bro. 1080p, 8-bit. So what we've got here is a 24 and a half inch, 8... So what we've got here is a... A lot of, lot of noise outside today.